So in our last video on customizing the advanced search page in SharePoint, we worked with adding a scopes picker to the advanced search page. Now I want to do th something a little bit more advanced. First off, you'll notice that on your advanced search page you'll have a default result types that you can search for. And this allows you to define, okay, only pull back things where uh, the value for that content is document, or it needs to be a Word file, Excel file, or a PowerPoint. And for each one of those different result types, you can set various different property restrictions that can be searched on. So I could say, choose that I only want to search for Word documents, where the author of those documents equals Josh Noble, or the author of those documents equals Robert Piddock. And so I could do a search for that, and that's only going to pull me back content where Word documents equals uh, the author equals Josh Noble or Robert Piddock. But I can build in various different other property restrictions here. But all these properties are things that are indexed by SharePoint out of the box. These are not your custom properties that you may have built out within your various different document libraries of SharePoint. So that's what we want to do here. First thing was first, we want to add a new result type. And let's do a search for, um, let's say we want to search for PDF documents. And so we'll add a new result type. The other thing we're going to do is we want to add in a couple additional custom property restrictions. If we look back at my document library that I built out earlier, we remember I built properties for region and document type. So let's make those available to my advanced search pages property restrictions. So to do this, I'm going to work with the XML very similar in a way that I did with the, uh, the search refinement web part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and edit the page. And I need to edit the advanced search box web part. And open up properties. Finally, open up this XML right here. And so instead of dealing with this XML in this really awful editor, I'm going to select all and copy. And we're going to paste it into Visual Studio so it's a little easier to work with. So I'll do a little bit of a review just on what's going on with this XML because it, it can be a little bit um, you know, confusing the first time you look at it. If we remember on our advanced search page, we have the ability to do checkboxes to search off of content that has a particular language tied to it. And that's all that's happening here is we're, we're just putting display names for particular languages to language IDs. And so if you want to show different languages, uh, that, that can be uploaded there. These are all the languages that are going to be supported by SharePoint uh, by default. As we scroll down the page, we have another section where we do property definitions. What these are doing is tying together a managed property in our SharePoint search service application to a display name that we want to show to our users. So our users will see the display name URL, but it will actually be calling this managed property called path. The part in between is actually defining what that pro what property type that is. And you can check in your uh, managed metadata or, or your search service application where you've mapped your properties if you want to find out uh, what data type that might be, if you can't remember. But uh, there's various different data types, text, integers, if we're dealing with, with values here. Uh, if you're working with ratings, it would be a decimal. But the most common one that you'll find is a text value. So here, I could uh, I could set things such as author is a text value and a display name it, the display name is author so pretty self-explanatory when you build those out it's just the property mapping what type of property it is and what you actually want to display to your users as we scroll down the page remember that I had various different result types I was able to choose for all results documents word files excel files and powerpoint files so each one of these little chunks of code right here is just tying back to a particular result type. And so I, as I add different result types into, uh, into my advanced search page, I'll get another section of XML that looks like this. And following along here, all I'm doing is showing a display name and a keyword query that needs to, to occur. So if I'm looking for Word files, I'd be looking for things that are doc, dot .doc files, dot .docx, dot dot, uh, and a few other file types. 
For this example, we're going to add in a PDF result type. So what I'll do here is instead of recreating all of this, I'm just going to copy that, and I want to show. I want this to show up at the bottom of my uh, bottom of my template. So I'm going to just go and cut and paste in a second instance of that Word documents, and we're going to rename that. We're just going to call it PDF, and we'll just call this PDFs. And then the only file extension that I care to bring back is our PDF file extension. I can delete out all these other file extensions. SharePoint wants to let me do that. Make sure you don't delete out that keyword query at the end. So at this point, if I were to upload this, I should now have a result type property, uh, or result type uh, restriction. What I now want to do is add in additional fields that I can search for on each one of these result types. And these are going to add in additional property restrictions at the bottom of my page. Uh, looking back at SharePoint, I believe we wanted to add in new restrictions for region and document type. So let's just do that. Instead of, again, recreating any of this, uh, this XML, I'm just going to do a little cut and paste. So both of those properties that I want to work with are text files, so do keep that, or text data types, so do keep that in mind. I'm just going to copy this in a couple times. And the first property that I want to work with is region. And this is the property name that's been mapped in our search service application. We know it's a text data type. And very easily, I just want to show the word region to my users. The other one we want to do is document type. Now keep in mind this is uh, this is the managed property so there's no spacing uh, that, that's available there. But the display name I want to show to my users would have a space. So now I've defined exactly what properties are tied to particular display names. The final thing I need to do to add those into our advanced search page is to add them into each one of these result types. So I'm going to again copy this property reference and we're just going to plug in property references for region and another property rec reference for document type. Again no space because what this is referencing back is our mapped property. And so at this point, if I were to upload this, I would now have this property, these two property restrictions available to me under all sites uh, result type. I want to make those properties available even if I'm using things like documents or Word documents. So I'm going to just cut and paste that same set into each one of these. And we'll notice that when I'm searching for result types for, say, Word documents, Excel documents, I might have a little different options that are available. I can customize that. So PDFs could have a completely different set of property restrictions available to them. I'm not going to get into that level of customization here, but uh, you can follow along, I'm sure, to build that out. So I've built out everything I want to uh, create here. I've added a new result type for PDF, and I've now added in new property uh, restrictions for region and document type for each one of those result types. So what I'm going to want to do is select all of this. And keep in mind, uh, you do want to have a backup of all of this before you've, uh, you start me messing with these things. <laughs> Always good to have a backup, especially before you're about to do what I'm going to do, and that's deleting all of the existing XML. And we're going to cut in, copy in our new XML. We can see here I have document type and region that's been built in there. We'll click OK and we'll click Apply. And if I haven't made any sort of errors, then I wouldn't get anything red here, which looks like I have made some sort of error here when I was building this out. So fortunately, we did this all in Visual Studio, so it should be pretty easy to figure out what that error might be. So if we look through here, there's kind of a spell check uh, option that's already being run on this page. So let's scroll down here and 
see what I might have missed. Here we go. So it looks like I didn't close this, this one out. So I didn't copy the entire section of XML like I should have. I need to put a closing tab in here, or tag in here. There we go, now that cleared out my error. So let's do that again. Let's select all. And we'll go and add that back in. Now I make sure I have that closing tag. Click OK. Click Apply. And again, make sure I check in my page. And now I should have an option for a PDF result type, which I have right there. And I should ha now have two new property restrictions, one for region and one for document type. So let's do a search here. We'll do thing, uh, a search where document type equals purchase orders. And that document also needs to be PDF. Let's go one step further and actually restrict this so it has to be on our nonprofit scope. So we'll do a search there. And now we're all set. I have results coming back that is, are scoped to nonprofit. The file extension needs to be a PDF. And the document type needs to be a purchase order. And I have 11 of those on the, on the page. So you can build out custom properties onto your property restrictions and new result types just following those exact same steps. Uh, you can also customize them so that various different result types have different types of property restrictions uh, associated with them. So with that, I'll let you build out uh, new property restrictions on your advanced search page.